Imagine the fire alarm rings right now, and one of our great judges jumps up on stage, and they say, don't panic, and they hand you a booklet, and they play an unbelievably creepy video that says, stay put in the event of fire, just before they all run off to their own expensive fireproof bunker. That'll give you some idea of what it was like living in Britain in 1981 to witness the release of Protect and Survive, Britain's hauntingly useless nuclear civil defense program. Some examples of the advice it offered included how to build your own indestructible door fortress, and how to properly label and dispose of family members in garbage bags. For some reason, this caused a bit of a backlash. But who wrote this, and why? Did they believe it? What were the real plans? These are questions I had to answer, as to date, there have been no books and only a couple journal articles written about Protect and Survive. It doesn't help that most of the documents surrounding the program's creation have been classified until 2012. So last year, I headed to the UK on a preliminary research trip. And what I found was the story of a group of civil servants tasked with the impossible goal of protecting over 55 million people from nuclear war with a budget of a few million pounds. At first, I saw a shadow of conspiracy. Many of the authors on the committee were aware it wouldn't work. I had an idea when I saw that the program director received a memo that said, we're not doing anything to help people in apartment buildings, to which he replied, trying to save everyone in the event of nuclear war is just egalitarian twaddle. Then I thought, well, this kind of makes sense. If you saw a useless civil defense video, would you be more inclined to vote for the only party running on a campaign of maintaining nuclear weapons as a deterrent to nuclear war in the first place? Many British people did. In fact, it served the Conservative Party quite well for almost 20 consecutive years. But the more I studied, the more I realized this wasn't just a British story or a Cold War conspiracy or a pocket topic. Everyone I talked to about Protect and Survive was fascinated because it was an immediately relatable story about humanity, about humans grasping at hope when there's seemingly none. When I read the official protocols that say things like, in the event the Prime Minister cannot fulfill his duties, the decision to launch a counter-strike shall be made by someone else, <laughs> I read that as a story of a group of people trying to do something, anything, to prolong their civilization in the bleakest of scenarios. Now, challenges define us. So too do they define a nation. What better way to learn about a culture than to study them at their most desperate and their deepest, darkest fears? The Blitz continues to define Britain, and so too will protect and survive once its story has been told. Thank you.